Hey buddies and windies and welcome back to the channel. Today is a video I've been very eager to bring out to you and that is a four month update on my native Australian lungfish. To be completely honest with you it's probably near the five month mark but I wanted to bring you up to speed with how this guy's been doing, his growth, his behaviour, how he's eating and everything like that. One other thing before we head into this video is almost 90% of you that are watching my videos are currently unsubscribed and we're so close to that 700 subscriber mark which means we're closer to the 1000 subscriber mark and it would really help me out if you're a regular viewer and you enjoy my videos if you wanted to consider hitting the subscribe button it's free it's completely up to you you can unsubscribe at any time but it would really make a big difference with the growth of this channel and me improving the quality of videos that I'm making but also let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land the land that I'm filming on the land that you're watching this video on and everyone amazing who is managing our land at the moment like our frontline workers at councils everyone amazing like that so without further ado enough talking let's have a look at my native Australian lungfish So for a quick recap, my Australian lungfish arrived on the 17th of the 3rd, 2021, which was in fact on my 18th birthday. And I mentioned he arrived because I did actually buy him online from my favorite online aquarium store, livefish.com.au. And I bought him off there because I've always had amazing success when they deliver fish. And because lungfish are an endangered species, he could not be delivered to my door. I actually had to go down to the Melbourne airport to go ahead and pick him up. And I made a full video of the whole pickup process, how I went to the airport and brought him home. But he now lives in this four foot aquarium, which was custom built and sponsored to me by my local aquarium store, Aquatico Aquarium. And this is purely a grow out aquarium for him because an adult lungfish would probably get to the same size of this aquarium. But for the next year or so, this is where he'll be. And after that, I have the intention to move him to a six foot or an eight foot aquarium to grow out even further. I also have named him as well, and he kind of has two names. The first one is Neo, because of the Latin name for a lungfish being Neoceradotus fosteri. But he does also go by the name Crocodile Lung D, courtesy of Blake's Aquatics, and you can kind of choose which name you want to use. But now we get into the part of this video which I am most excited about and get to say owning an Australian lungfish has just been a massive learning opportunity and an even bigger privilege and it's going to be one of the main reasons that I got this fish because I can now document the life and the growth of this fish, its behaviour, all of these things that would be basically impossible to see out in the wild and show them to you through my videos. But now let's look at the growth of Neo because when he first arrived he was only 13 centimeters long and in the past four months that I've had him he's grown to 19 centimeters which is crazy. This is really really useful insight because I know that he's healthy, he's eating and all the nutrients from his food is actually going somewhere and along with his growth his behavior has also had a massive change in these four months as well. So for the first one and a half months that I had my Australian lungfish, all he did was hide like 24 seven, which got me super worried because for a fish like this, observation is everything. And I wouldn't see him for two to three days on end. So it would just be a matter of feeding the entire aquarium and then just hoping that he eats, which isn't a safe or responsible way of keeping a fish like this. But at that point, I did a big change, which would change the course of his behavior to what it is today. And it actually all came down to the aquascape of this tank. When I first originally introduced him, I was sort of under the impression that I wanted to give him as much hiding places and cover as possible. This tank was pretty densely planted with a lot of stem plants in the back. We had this big piece of driftwood and I really went overboard with trying to give him cover. And that just induced him to hide all the time. So what I then did was actually remove all of the stem plants from the back. And that way it gives me a really big playing field where I can see him all the time and the driftwood piece that I have rather than just dropping it on the sand where he would then tunnel and hide under I actually elevated it and used these terracotta ornaments to sort of create a platform where I can put the driftwood on and this way I've got a vantage point on him 
all day, every day. Whenever I want to see him, I can immediately lock onto him and that way I can spot feed him, make sure that he's doing well. And it actually made his confidence a lot better as well. And I only left the epiphyte plants in the aquarium. He doesn't eat plants for those that are wondering. Okay, so when it comes to tank mates, I've got a pretty unconventional mix of fish. When we have a look at the four foot tank, I've got my fancy goldfish primarily in here. I've also got some other community species like my black widow tetras, my roseline sharks, got some Siamese algae eaters and an assortment of fish like that, which is really great because it gives me the confidence that he can be kept with a wide array of fish. And when he eventually gets upgraded to a bigger aquarium, that's definitely what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm only gonna keep him with native Australian community fish and when it comes to feeding gotta say he's way easier to get on foods than I expected purely because he eats everything that I offer I primarily feed him sinking pellets from the extreme and vitalis fish food brands but I also do feed him bits of fruit common frozen foods like bloodworms and brine shrimp and I also do give him pieces of prawns and, and fish as well which is really good to vary his diet the only downside that I faced is actually some of the tank mates like the goldfish out competing him at times for food. Lungfish are very, very slow eaters and a potato probably has better eyesight than them. Which is why I actually need to spot feed him. I think we've developed this sort of mutual understanding when it comes to feeding because sort of in the afternoon around about five to six o'clock, he will come down to the bottom left hand side of the four foot tank and just sit there. And that's where I spot feed him. It's sort of in a location where the plants sort of barricade the goldfish from getting into his spot. And I just drop a swarm of pellets on his face and he then goes and crunches on them. But in terms of other observations, I think it's kind of safe to say that lungfish are probably relying on their other senses rather than their eyesight. Because when you actually look at the face of a lungfish, not just in juveniles like my lungfish, but also adults as well, they have these sort of pores which are speckled across their face. And I think they use this similar to how sharks do in terms of picking up small electrical pulses emitted by prey items in the environment. And I think they use this to sort of target small pieces of food or any sort of living organisms in the tank and gives them a better awareness of their surroundings. The other observation that I found with Neo is I think that lungfish in general have a very slow digestive system. And the reason I think this is when I feed him, and this isn't just pellets, but any other food that I give, he really chews it up. He makes it into this puree, which he then mixes with his saliva or sort of mucus that he produces in his mouth to then slurp up. And I think by breaking the food down this much, when he digests it, it probably makes the absorption of nutrients a lot easier. And the other thing is, unlike most fish, which generally produce waste every day, he goes through like one big waste clear out every three to four days. And it's a pretty sizable amount. Alrighty you bodgies and witties, I really hope you enjoyed this video of my native Australian lungfish and if you've got any questions that popped up during this video about his care or his growth or behaviour or any of these topics, feel free to ask them down below and I'll make sure to answer them for you. Another thing I've sort of been thinking about is doing like a lungfish live stream where we can go through some facts and information about the lungfish, you guys can ask some questions and I think it'd be a really fun and interactive sort of thing to do. But yeah, once again, thank you so much for the support that you've been giving the channel so far and this video as well and once again that subscribe button is always down there but feel free to like this video as well so yeah that's it from me a huge huge thank you once again but as always stay happy stay safe stay Australian bodgy and the lungfish out